Kaboom, and welcome to the Signature Spellbomb Mother's Day Special. This is Chad. All the decks on this channel are built for the Oathbreaker format. If you want to know more about Oathbreaker, please check out the link in the description or visit us at the subreddit for Oathbreaker underscore MTG for more information. Today's special episode of Oathbreaker, we will be looking at a $30 deck tech. The cost of this deck includes shipping and the cost of our Oathbreaker. Decks on this channel are built to be fun and casual play and interactive with your opponents. And our special theme decks aren't constructed to our usual power level requirements. On the Oath Breakdown, we break down the deck and build it back up so you can see how the deck works and how it was designed. Now let's get into it. Today's Oathbreaker deck is a thank you to all the mamas out there with a theme deck called Single Mother and All Her Exes. This is a Jaya Ballard deck with Jaya's Emolting Inferno as the signature spell. Our mother of all planeswalkers, Jaya Ballard, is a 5 mana planeswalker that comes into play with 5 loyalty. Plus 1, we add 3 red mana to our mana pool and we can spend this mana only to cast instant sorceries. Plus one, we can discard up to three cards and then draw that many cards. And minus eight, we get an emblem that states we can cast instants and sorceries from our graveyard. If a card cast this way would be put into a graveyard, we exile it instead. Like a true mother, she uses her first ability to support us in our plans, provides us with what we need with her second ability, and gives back when it counts with her third. Our signature spell is Jaya's Emolting Inferno. It costs X and two red, is a legendary sorcery, and deals X damage to up to three three target creatures. We have chosen to run this spell because of its power, its ability to maybe hit more than one opponent or target, and that it has Mama's name on it. Now that we have our Command Zone card squared away, what is our game plan? Since Jaya is like the mother of all Planeswalkers, we are going to go with a super friend strategy, protect our sweet baby Planeswalkers by using board wipes and X spells. Our goal is to get the family together and win the game using their sweet, sweet Planeswalker value. Having said that, let's get into the breakdown. In the first section of our breakdown, we'll talk about feeding and raising the kiddos. Runaway Steamkin, Pyretic Ritual, and Desperate Ritual can all provide us with some fast mana that help us pay for the kiddos to get them into play and to take care of those damn exes. We're also going to provide our children with some wonderful toys to play with, providing the kids with a doll and guardian idol and an educational puzzle in Hedron Archive, which can also get us some advantage. Speaking of advantage, we're going to use card advantage in our next step to reunite our family. Since how well you get along with your family is often situational, so is all of our card advantage. Light up the stage is a tuna red mana sorcery with a spectacle cost of one red. You can exile two cards from the top of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards. Risk Factor and Browbeat are both very similar. They say target opponent may have Risk Factor deal 4 damage to them. If that player doesn't, you draw 3 cards, and it has Jumpstart, which allows us to replay it from the graveyard. Browbeat, for 2 and a red, says any player may have Browbeat deal 5 damage to him or her, and if no one does, target player draws 3 cards. Our next 3 cards are going to provide us with Impulsive Draw. They're all 3 enchantments, and they all do something very similar. Curious Rise says at the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, exile the top card of your library. You may use that card until you exile another card with Furious Rise. Vance's Blast Cannons cost 3 and a red. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. If it is a non-land card, you may cast it this turn. Whenever you've cast the third spell of your turn, you may transform it. We're not really concerned with transforming it, but when we do, the land on the back can tap for 1 red man of any color, or you can pay 2 and a red to tap to do 3 damage to any target. Outpost Siege um, enters the battlefield. You choose cons or dragons. We're only ever going to use cons because we're not running enough creatures to make use of the dragon side. Cons reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library until end of turn. You may play that card. The last two cards in this section actually feature pictures of our family members. Active Impulse has a picture of Chandra on it. It says, exile the top three cards of your library. Until the end of turn, you may play those cards that are exiled this way. Sarkon's Dragonfire, which costs 3 and 2 red, 
says it deals three damage to any target, but then we can look at the top five cards of our library. We may reveal red card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order. Having said that, let's meet the immediate family in our next section. Tybalt the Fiendblooded costs two red mana, comes into play with two loyalty. His plus one is to draw a card at random. His minus four is to have an opponent take damage equal to the number of cards in their hand. And his minus six is to gain control of all creatures until end of turn, untap them, and they gain haste. This is the type of planeswalker I'm talking about when we talk about using their value to win the game. Moving on, we have Chandra, Acolyte of Flame. She is a four loyalty planeswalker. We can zero her to put a loyalty counter on each planeswalker we control. For zero, we can create two 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens. They gain haste and we have to sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step. For minus two, we can cast target instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost three or less from our graveyard. If that card would be put into our graveyard this turn, we would exile it instead. Chandra Novice Pyromancer is a five loyalty planeswalker that has plus one elemental creatures we control, get plus two plus zero until end of turn. Minus one, add two red mana to our mana pool, and minus two, Chandra Novice Pyromancer deals two damage to any target. Both of these Chandras provide us with a little bit of extra value and help buffer our face a little bit. Our next card is Chandra Fire Artisan. She's a four loyalty planeswalker. When one or more loyalty counters are removed from Chandra Fire Artisan, she deals that much damage to target opponent or planeswalker. For plus one loyalty, we exile the top card of our library and may play it this turn. For minus seven, we exile the top seven cards of our library and we may play them this turn. This is all just some more excellent card advantage for the deck. Jaya, Venerated Fire Mage, is a five loyalty planeswalker. If another red source we control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals that much damage plus one to that permanent and player instead. Minus two, Jaya Venerate Fire Mage, deals two damage to any target. Sarkon the Masterless, one of our deck's win conditions, is a five loyalty planeswalker. His static ability reads, whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, each dragon you control deals one damage to that creature. We're probably not going to be able to make enough use of this because we're not running enough dragons. Plus one, until end of turn, each planeswalker we control becomes a 4-4 dragon creature with flying. That Planeswalker damage is how we could win. Minus three, we can create a 4-4 Red Dragon creature token with flying. Creating some flying blockers will really help us in some situations. Our last Planeswalker and Black Sheep of the family is Tybalt Rakish Instigator. He's a five loyalty Planeswalker that says your opponents can't gain life. His minus two ability reads, create a 1-1 one, one Red Devil creature token with, when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. Preventing our opponents from gaining life can keep us in the game and actually set us up to win. Opponents gaining life undermines our strategy and that one damage can also be used to ping down planeswalkers who are about to alt. Since we're talking about a family reunion, let's talk about the extended family. Our extended family contains a suite of cards that is designed to increase our damage or to provide us with some incremental damage. Getting the whole family together is a truly terrible prospect for our opponents. Quest for the Pure Flame costs one red mana. Whenever a source we control would deal damage to an opponent, we can put a quest counter on Quest for the Pure Flame. We can remove four quest counters from Quest of the Pure Flame to sacrifice it. If we do, we get to double all of our damage until the end of the turn. Electrostatic Field, a 0-4 creature with Defender, can survive most of our board wipes. Whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, Electrostatic Field deals one damage to each opponent. Anti-Iron Crag Pyromancer is a 0-4 human wizard. Whenever we draw our second card each turn, Iron Crag Pyromancer deals three damage to any target. We do have quite a bit of card draw on the deck, so we should be able to trigger this with pretty good regularity. Since we are running 20 mountains in the deck, Garblin Char Belcher is an excellent source of damage. For three, we can tap and reveal cards from top of our library till we reveal a land card, and Goblin Char Belcher will deal damage equal to the number of cards revealed this way to an opponent. If the land card revealed is a mountain, we double that damage. Pyromancer's Assault is an enchantment that says whenever we cast our second spell each turn, Pyromancer's Assault deals two damage to target creature or player. This is again some incremental damage that helps us continually chip away at our opponents. 
When you mess with this family, they'll throw down the Pyromancer's Gauntlet, a 5-cost artifact if a red instant or sorcery spell you control or a red planeswalker you control would deal damage to a permanent or a player, it deals that much damage plus 2 to that player instead. Now that we've gone through this, let's go through the next section, where you might be asking yourself, what would Mama do if you messed with her family? Because don't you know, if Mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. In this section, we're going to be using a lot of board wipes to get the things that makes Mama unhappy out of the way. Pyroclasm deals 2 damage to each creature. First Eruption is a Saga enchantment. On 1, it deals 1 damage to each creature with flying. On 2, we get some value by adding 2 red mana to our mana pool. On 3, we sacrifice a mount. If we do, we do 3 damage to each creature. Our next card does this in a bigger way. Chain Reaction deals X damage to each creature, where X is the number of creatures on the battlefield at the time. Next up, Mizium Mortars. Costs 1 in red, and it deals 4 damage to our creature we don't control. But if we overload it for 3 and 3 red, it will do that damage to each creature we don't control. Flame Break, for 3 red, deals 3 damage to each creature without flying in each player. Creatures dealt damage this way can't be regenerated this turn. A classic card, Earthquake, could cost X and a red. Earthquake deals X damage to each creature with flying and each player. Speaking of Xs... Did we forget about those damn dirty X's from earlier in the deck deck? Why don't we cover them next? Devil's Play costs X and a red, and it deals X damage to any target and has flashback for X and 3 red. Banefire for X and red deals X damage to any target, and if X is 5 or more, the spell can't be countered and the damage can't be prevented, which is excellent for us. We don't want to be stopped. In order to celebrate, Mama, let's light up a Harvest Pyre. Harvest Pyre is not really an X spell, but it does have X in the text. As an additional cost to cast Harvest Pyre, we exile X cards from our graveyard, and Harvest Pyre will deal X damage to target creature. This can help us with some of our opponent's big beefy boys we don't know how to deal with without a huge investment of mana. Red Sun Zenith is a reusable burn spell, and in that it deals X damage to our creature or player. If a creature dealt damage this way would be put into a graveyard this turn, we exile it instead and get to shuffle the Zenith back into our library. Burn from Within costs X and deals X damage to our creature or player. If a creature dealt damage this way would die, it loses indestructible and would be exiled. Now that we've gone through every card in each section of the deck, why don't we get on to the mana base? In this deck, we're running a Emergent Zone, because we can pay one and tap and sacrifice it to cast some of our spells as though they had Flash. This really helps to surprise our opponents in our X deck. We're also running 20 Basic Mountains. An extra note about this deck is that it is built in such of a way that if you want to learn Oathbreaker and you want to try out a lot of different type of Red Planeswalkers and Signature Spells, you can simply just swap out the Planeswalkers and Signature Spells within the deck. None of them are going to be absolutely perfect, but it's like getting a whole bunch of decks for the price of one. Now that we have looked at the deck, let's do a quick price check. Our deck prices are based on the best available prices on TCG Player for any available card at the time of recording. This includes cost of shipping, but not our basic lands. The average deck cost for Jaya Ballard is $94.21 on Oathbreaker Wreck. Our deck cost is much lower at $27.13. If you want to see a breakdown of the deck cost, there will be a link posted in the description. Since this was a special theme deck for the Mother's Day occasion, there are going to be no betterments or improvements for this video at this time. With all this said and done, give me your thoughts on the deck. I want to hear what you have to say, and we'd love to hear what you think about the channel. If you enjoy this video and you want to support the channel, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you would, please also turn on notifications so when you know when a new video goes live. And we also have merchandise. If you want to show your signature spell bomb pride, please see the link in the description. We have just recently put up new Veraska themed merchandise, so check that out. Another way to connect with us directly is to visit us on all of the social media things listed here. If you want to support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron of the channel or a channel member. You can check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash signaturespellbomb. 
Again, a huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. Thanks again, and I am off to Oathbreak another deck. Thank you.